another day for some good trucking. got an assignment for today. They gave it to us yesterday already. I gotta go pick up a rental trailer, uh, roll tight, and pull it on up to Toulon and load it up with stuff. I don't know where that stuff is going yet. Well, actually I do. It's in my computer here. I just gotta look. So my truck knows where it's going. I don't know where it's going. I just know where it is. That's all I need to know right now. I don't really care where it's going. I just care where it is. Where is it right now? I gotta go get it. It's in Toulon. We're going to too long. So we're going to bobtail to the other side of Winnipeg. They want me in too long for noon. I'm going to be early. I'll just park out of the way somewhere if I'm uh, if they're not ready for me. But I'd rather be early than late. If you're on time, you're late, right? You know what that means. Smooth rolling. Rolling tarps. That's what they call them. Smooth rolling tarps. Because it's a rental, they maintain it and make sure it's good to go before we pick it up. It seems we're running low on roll tight trailers again. Got a lot of stuff moving. We're very busy. We gotta keep up. Lights are all working as they should be. License plate light, working. No holes in the tarps. Whenever I pick up a rental trailer, I go around and I look for damage. Yeah, that's there, it's nothing big. Make sure that uh, I mark down any, any damage that they could pin on me or on us. Because I'm not gonna be the only one pulling this trailer. I'm taking this thing up to Toulon to load up, and a highway driver is going to take it to wherever it's going. Who knows where? I'm aware of the the shortages at the fuel stations in some parts of the U.S. right now. So uh, hopefully it's not going in that direction for a little while. But you know, it's one crisis after another out there. This is the world we live in, and we just gotta figure things out we gotta figure it out you know I've got to sort of uh, chuckle and shake my head at people who uh, seem to think that life will be easy that life is always going to be easy you know we have a lot of infrastructure built we're standing on the shoulders of everyone who came before us all the bridges that have already been built before there was bridges you know you had to take a ferry across these big rivers or go all the way around or just not cross the river Got all of this infrastructure built and uh, not just bridges, but everything else. We're standing on the shoulders of all those that came before us. And uh, some people think it's just always going to be running smoothly, that there's never going to be problems. It's never going to be easy, all right? The only time it's easy is when we're in between crises. Right, crises? Crises. Crises. My point is, never expect life to just go as planned. There's always things that pop up, especially in trucking. You learn that pretty quick in trucking. It never goes as planned. And it's never as easy as you hope it'll be. And there's always unexpected challenges that you just gotta figure out. You just gotta figure it out and do the best you can and still make something good out of it. Because as soon as we're done with one crisis, it's just a waiting game until the next one. Will it be next week? Will it be next year? I don't know, but it's going to come. I know that sounds kind of pessimistic, but you have to be prepared. Be optimistically prepared. Okay, let's hope for the best, but let's prepare for the worst. 
Anyways, there's my little motivational tidbit for you guys this morning. I don't know if it helps or not. I'm probably just preaching to the choir here. That's what I'm thinking. About. All right. Let's go pick up some freight. Let's hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Be ready for anything. Remember, always check to make sure you're not going to lose your trailer. Roll it forward. Spike it. She's connected. See? Now we're going to have a good day. Because we prepared for the worst, now we can be optimistic and say it's going to be a good day because at least the trailer's not going to fall off. You got to admit, if you lose your trailer, that's a bad day. That would be a little more difficult to, uh, <laughs> to turn into a good day. Maybe you'd meet a very nice tow truck driver and make a new friend. That's something good. <laughs> I don't know what to do in that situation, but... I'm just gonna make sure it doesn't happen to me. Well, we've got a little bit of an issue. A little bit of a problem. You know that AC we just installed? Well, the guys came and charged it up, or uh, what, what do they, what do they call it again? They got it ready for summer. Uh, they were there yesterday while I was at work. Britt was at home, and uh, you know they did a really good job, obviously installing it. We really like them, and they've, they have really good customer service. And I'm getting to that. Uh, I'm talking about Browns Plumbing and Heating. They, they installed the AC, and for some reason, after they charged up the AC, got it ready for summer yesterday and just, I guess, did a, a check to make sure it was all good to go. They tested it and it was working fine. But for some reason, when I got home, it didn't want to turn on for me. It wasn't working. No AC. The compressor wouldn't even start, like the, the outside part of the AC. So we had no air conditioning, which wasn't that big of a deal. But uh, the nights still get pretty cool. But today's a really hot day. It's 24 degrees Celsius outside, and it's only gonna get warmer as summer gets closer, right? We need our AC. And I checked the thermostat to make sure that it wasn't the problem there. I went outside and the compressor for the air conditioner, it wouldn't start, it wouldn't even run. It's like it had no power. So I checked the disconnect switch, that was on. I went and checked the circuit breaker, that was on, that was all good, but it just didn't want to turn on the AC. So we had no air conditioning last night, which is fine because it still gets pretty cool at night, but it's, it's hot right now. It's 24 degrees Celsius and it's going to be a warmer week and we're moving into summer when it's going to get really hot. Like we're talking 35 Celsius or, you know, 100 Fahrenheit or so. And we need our air conditioning. We're coming into our season where the sun doesn't leave us alone. Always there burning everything up. So I got home, I couldn't get the AC to turn. So I got all frustrated. <laughs> What's going on now? So something must have happened. It's probably something really simple. But uh, Brown's Plumbing and Heating is always, like I like I said, uh, when they installed it, they're great people that give us great service. Uh, I called them this morning and said, hey, uh, something happened. You guys were here yesterday, and the AC worked before you were here, and now I'm here after you're gone, and the AC's not working. Something happened. Uh, so they right away frantically tried to uh, fi figure out a time when we could meet to get this thing fixed ASAP, right? It's going to be a warm week. And uh, they're available to come out this afternoon, but I have to meet them there to let them into the house and stuff and make sure the dogs don't go nuts because if no one's home and someone's walking around the backyard and walking around the house, the dogs are going to go nuts. And I don't blame them, but... I'd like to be there to make sure uh, everything goes well. And I have to open the door for them because they're gonna have to check the circuit breaker too, I guess. I don't know what's going on. I've been talking for a little while here. We're gonna go home and figure it out. But yeah, they're on the ball again. Like, first thing this morning I called them and boom, this afternoon they're there to fix it. So once again, hitting a home run with us. We're definitely gonna go through them for all of our, uh, all of our uh, heating and cooling for our new house and our build and we also recommend them to everyone we know because they you know I like to do that because it's a lot of places you go you get bad service and it's always a bad experience but when you find a place that gives you like 150 percent 
I like to let people know so they know where to go as well. Because a good attitude goes a long way. I don't care if you do a good job. If you have a bad attitude, I'm not calling you back. <laughs> I'm not going to call you back. But if you have a good attitude and you do a good job, well, you just got a lifelong customer. Anyways, enough about that. Let's go home and figure out what's wrong with this thing. It better not be... Well, I hope that it's not going to start working just as they get there. Because then I'm going to look like a moron. Okay, so I sort of hope it's still not working. But I kind of hope that it's fixed. I kind of hope that it's not working and then they show up and fix it and find the problem so it doesn't happen again. Let's say it that way. Spend a pretty penny on that air conditioner. I'd like to use it. <laughs> it's no good just sitting back there. I mean, it looks nice. All right, so it's a hot day, like I said. So we got all the shades closed in the house to keep the heat out. Uh, we got the air conditioning running right now where it says it's running. It's 22 degrees in here. It was up to 17. It's not cooling down. So just to prove that I'm not crazy. We'll go back around here and check on this thing. This thing should be running. You should hear the compressor running, moving the Freon, right? I'm no expert, but this thing usually makes some kind of sound, and then this fan comes on and off intermittently, depending on how hot it is. Nothing. So, I'm not crazy. Thank God, because it would have been pretty embarrassing if they went through all this trouble to quickly rush over here to help us, and then the thing worked just fine. So I'm kind of glad it's not working. He's gonna be here any minute, and uh, he's gonna fix it up for us. Is fixed. Thank you very much to Browns, who came out here immediately. They were here yesterday, and uh, they figured out what was wrong with it, fixed it up, and now we have a properly, fully functioning AC here again. Apparently, he was telling me about this Lennox. Apparently, it's like the top of the line. This was the first one of this model. It's brand new. That they, this first one of this model that they installed for a customer. Right here for us. See, it's all properly charged up and running good. Thank God, because it's hot outside. And now that that's taken care of, Brit's at work right now. The sun is shining. It's really warm out. It's a perfect day to go for a ride. I actually shined this thing all up using a uh, bull snot. Worked really well. All the bugs on the front here, oh, there's a few new ones already, but this thing, this thing was covered in bugs. I didn't wash it properly when I stored it. And it was covered in bugs on the front here and on the glass. And I used the, the visible glass cleaner from Bull Snot and the detail polisher on the rest of it. And the bugs just melted right off. I was very happy with that. I actually got the glass cleaner right here. I used this on the headlights and on this glass display there. Worked really well. I'm gonna go for a ride. I'll talk to you in a bit. Well, we came here down memory lane. I don't know if you can see through the bushes there, probably not, but uh, that's our old place. I miss it. But, uh, you know, I'm happy with the point we're at in life as well. So it was a good thing. We had to move on and we're gonna build a, an even better property. I miss these pines though. Those are something that we uh, don't have at our new land. For those of you who are new, we used to live here. And in September, we sold. It's the first time I've been back since then to see if anything changed. And it's all exactly the same. My flag is still flying there. Obviously, I'm not going to go. It's not my property anymore. I can't go in there. Uh, yeah, a lot of memories here. A lot of good memories. I love these pines. But like I said, we're going to make the new property even better. Uh, there we have a lot of poplar instead of these uh, jack pines. Doesn't give quite the same feel. But you know, We had... Uh, 17 and a half acres here. So all of this to the end of the road over there 
all the way out that way there's uh, a lot of land out that way it's a big 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 piece of land in here and, uh, it's really too bad that we had to move on but we're can't live in the past we're living in the present and we're planning for the future it's just hard waiting because I know our new house is going to be even better. I know our new property is going to be even better. But it's the waiting game, right? I got to wait. That's why we moved into the small house in Steinbach. We're saving up money so that we can uh, pretty much pay for that house, at least half of it or so, so that our mortgage payments are really small. And uh, we'll go from there. So enough living in the past. Let's get out of here and go back home. Diesel. People are getting upset at me because I'm not showing you in the vlogs enough, man. Diesel, you. Hey, guys. Hey, thanks for sticking up for me. I've been feeling kind of left out. I know, we got a little tail wag. Chevy, how about you? I don't know. I don't really like the camera, but hi, guys. Look at my tail. Very fluffy. Diesel. You've been a very good boy. Britt snuck in. Didn't even hear her coming in the driveway. The dogs didn't even hear you. <laughs> Frank, you're not gonna come say hi? Frankers! He's mad at me right now. He Frank! Was, he was barking a little bit and I Frank. had a stern talking to him. Face to face, man to man. He's still upset that uh, he found out I'm the boss and that he's not actually the boss, so. He doesn't like being uh, talked down to. He doesn't like being told what to do. Are we friends now? Are we friends? Are we friends? Can I honk your nose again? No? Only because mom's holding you. Oh, he was mad. I made him sit <gasps> and stay sitting for like what? a full minute. Oh my goodness. Which, he's old, that's probably pretty uncomfortable for him, so that was his punishment, to just sit for like a full minute and just not move. Sit. He looked very uncomfortable. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, what a mean dad. Oh my goodness. Oh he goodness. looks at me. Oh, thank you for the nose nibble. <laughs> We're back at work here the next morning. And uh, just to continue that conversation from yesterday, uh, Britt had just gotten home and uh, we had a nice evening together there. But to continue the conversation about our old property, the reason we sold uh, well, was a mixture of reasons. Uh, one was finances. Uh, we wanted, well, it was, like I said, a mixture. It was finances, it was also the house needed a little bit of work, or it actually needed a lot of work. And uh, we were already living eh, near the top of our budget where we wanted to be spending money. And in order to get all the work done on the house, we would have to go way above that and spend a whole ton of money into a house that was very old. And you have to understand, we want to be in a house that we can retire in and have paid off and can trust and rely on. This house was very old. Uh, it still had uh, wood chips in the attic. That's how old it was, that's how they used to insulate the attics. And you know, that needed to be replaced with something newer. Uh, There's there a whole bunch of other stuff. The property was so huge that I couldn't keep up with it. Uh, especially when I was on the road long haul. It was impossible to keep up with everything. The garage needed work, the house needed work. Our little guest cab in there needed a lot of work. And all of that takes a lot of money. And we could probably invest, oh, well over a hundred thousand dollars into that property not even be done and uh, we're sitting there thinking to ourselves okay we could invest all this money into this house and still have an old house that's been you know helped along a little bit and has been uh, renovated and it's good to go but you know the bones are still old it's an old house and now we have our mortgage plus on top of that another hundred thousand plus into renovations and we're stuck here paying it off we're sort of like paying for two houses and in the end we only get one so we had to come to a tough decision. We loved that property. I really loved it. It was perfect. It was amazing. I had a little creek running through it, 18 acres, just about, and just all the privacy in the world. But uh, I don't want to pay for two houses in my lifetime and only be left with one. 
and I don't want to be living at the very top of my budget the rest of my life and be spending my entire paycheck into just maintaining this old house and not being able to go out and do anything with my life. I only get one life. Or, or so one life here anyway. This, this body only lasts so long and then I gotta move on, right? And so while I'm here in this body, I wanna be able to enjoy life a little bit. I wanna have some extra spending money and I wanna have some extra saving money and I gotta retire one day. You know, it doesn't matter if I have a nice big fancy house when I retire. Well, what am I gonna do? I got nothing to retire on because I didn't have any money for savings. I'm gonna have to sell the nice big house to get all my investment back. Now I got a big chunk of money that I can retire on, but I don't have that house that I wanted to retire in. You see what I'm saying here? It just goes in circles and goes in circles. And we had to come to the tough decision and we were watching the housing market. And the housing market right now is crazy, especially for country properties. Anyone who lives in a city right now and has money is trying to get out. And we had a big, beautiful property. Anyone with a little bit of money to invest into it, it would be perfect for them, right? So we knew we could sell it pretty quick. Uh, the, the market was good, it's a seller's market. And we said, okay, if we're gonna do this, we have to do this now before the market goes back to uh, a buyer's market. Because then it's not good to sell, it's good to buy. But at the same time, when it's a seller's market, it's easy to sell the house. You can make a big, big profit on it, but then you gotta find a house. Th then you're a buyer, you have to find a new house, right? And we, we found a great deal on the house we're in right now. The owners really needed to get out. They were moving out of province and it was small. Uh, so not a lot of people were interested in it because it's not good for a big family. There's only two bedrooms, there's no basement. It's like, it's a, it's a very small house. So it has a limited market. So with that in mind, we were able to get them down a lot because the house wasn't as desirable as other houses, which means when we sell it, it's also going to be a problem for that. But uh, we're, that's why we're probably going to keep it and uh, maybe sell it to uh, one of our family members or I don't know, maybe keep it as a rental property, keep it as an investment property. We'll see what happens, that, that's in the future. But for now, we got a good deal on that house and we were able to sell our house the first day it was on the market. Uh, like pretty much everything else right now and we made a really good profit on it so with that profit we were able to pay off our vehicles pay off a bunch of debt get into our new house we bought new land in another part uh, close by which is just as good it just needs to be developed so uh, that, that that's the story behind that house though I loved the property but the house needed some work and a whole bunch of things all piled together to make us decide you know what we need to sell now now's the time and we'll build our dream home. Because now when we build our home on our new land, we got a nice big piece of property again uh, out in the country right now. It's all treed. You guys have seen it. And uh, once we build the house there, that house will be built brand new, obviously. And the bones will be brand new. So we'll be able to spend the rest of our lives in there not worrying about the big things, right? Everything goes wrong with houses. Like even a brand new house has problems. I realize that. But all the bones and structural components of it and the 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 all the insides will be brand new. We can, we can just live in there the rest of our lives and not have to worry so much. And uh, it'll be paid off when we retire. And uh, I'll have only paid for one house, not two. So I'll, I'll have paid for one house and have one house, unless we keep the other one for a rental property, but that's an asset then, doesn't matter. Then I have two houses. If I pay for two houses, I want two houses. But if I pay for two houses, only have one house, my brain starts like, that doesn't make sense. Why are you paying for two houses? You only got one. So anyway, that's sort of the long story short. I could probably babble on a long time about that yet, but that was the first time I went back to look at that property since we moved in. Yeah, a little sad. We'll never have that exact property again. It'll never be the same, but uh, we got to move forward. I believe we made a good decision and uh, that one day when it's our turn to retire, that we'll be able to enjoy those years and... Uh, know that we made some good decisions and live a little bit com more comfortably financially but we'll see you always got to keep retirement in mind right because eventually this body gets old I don't get old inside it but this body gets old and you know it's an amazing machine isn't it like I mean it has the ability to heal itself to a certain extent and I got to sit inside it and I just the only problem with it is that it ages and dies. But, uh, yeah. Then you get a new one, right? And you start all over or you go somewhere else. 
Anyways. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate you. Please don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Uh, it does help me uh, with the, the channel, with the algorithms. And if you don't mind, if you could subscribe if you haven't already too, that also helps me. And if you want to share it with your friends, go ahead. We can all hang out together. I've been doing this almost 10 years. I, I don't plan on stopping, so we can hang out another 10 years. You can watch us grow up and see if this decision and, and, and how this goes with this house build and see how my life progresses towards retirement. Anyways, see you tomorrow.